New Directions in Welfare is a conference for uh, economists interested in the economics of well-being. Human well-being is, is just important. It is just important to people. <laughs> That's what matters to them. And actually, you know, we look at money and income and all these financial measures, but these are just indicators. And, and there are so many other things that matter to people. And so this is an opportunity for, for us to reflect on whether economies are actually ge generating these, these benefits that we really look for. There are a number of very extremely important issues such as uh, life satisfaction, well-being, the welfare of children and of dependent people. Economists have a lot to contribute on these issues and that is precisely the purpose of this conference. In this uh, period of economic crisis, the, the ones who are really suffering is just normal people. And we are talking about them because we are talking about happiness and well-being, um, you know, inequality, poverty. And I think that this is relevant because sometimes we think very much about efficiency and not about these other sort of issues. And here we are talking about that. Economics, particularly post-financial crisis 2008, faces a range of challenges. I think the conference has pointed us in a number of different useful directions, but also to think about the profession of economics and how we, as a profession, need to be more open to both a diversity of methods, but also to the contributions of different disciplines. Growth is not enough. It's not an end in itself. Because it's not because you grow that necessarily you will have other things in life that will improve at the same time. So what needs to be changed from the economics profession's point of view is to have a more balanced and perhaps a broader set of uh, aspects of people's lives that they should get interested in. The main takeaway is from this conversation we've had in this conference in Paris is that actually we do have the tools and techniques to better measure the quality of life, to measure human progress. But too often we do not have the basic data to feed into those measures. So for example in one exercise we've looked at the development and happiness of very young children. Now very young children don't have incomes but they they do develop, they do have well-being, happiness and using our approach we've been able to show the kinds of things, the kinds of activities that promote development and happiness. Active parenting, active engagement, around, often around arts related activities, things like painting, singing, all of these things are related to kind of quite important core skills such as movement, speech and so on. And these then turn out to be related to how well people do later on in life. They have long-term lasting uh, impacts and effects. These are just things we would not be able to, to gather or, or, or understand if we just continue to focus on measuring income. We can analyse people's happiness, we can understand what drives happiness, well-being and so on across, the, across all the domains of life that matter to people. Uh, and so now all we need to do is encourage countries around the world to start collecting and analysing this data on a regular basis.